Good morning. 2-2-4 is the removal of the main shaft. So the motor with the worm gear cranks this so it powers the entire teletype. Removal of the main shaft. 1. Remove the receiving unit from the base. Done. 2. Remove the gear cover, worm gear bracket, and gasket from the teletypewriter frame. Okay, for removing the main shaft, which is the shaft that is tied to this screw here, and it goes straight that way, uh, we have to remove this machine screw. However, I looked down into the grease down here, and there was this bushing kind of sitting in the grease. So I have to figure out where this goes, and I'm going to put it with the bell. It may have been part of the worm gear that comes through here. No idea, so I'm just going to have to figure that out as we move along. First thing to do is to remove this screw. And it's turning the shaft. There we go. I notice that this looks like a washer and if it's a washer it's not listed on the diagram so I'll show you a picture of the diagram it goes a screw little lock washer in the gear three Remove the machine screw and lock washer, loosen the four motor mounting screws, and remove the main shaft driven gear. Okay, part three also asks to uh, remove the four motor mounting screws. And the screws that were in the motor are already out. And if they're talking about these, I'm leaving those in. And then it says to remove the gear, the shaft driven gear. So let's see if that comes right off. And that is beautiful. And that was sweet. Okay, that was easy. Four. Remove the drive keys from the main shaft driven gear. This gear is just caked with grease. And I don't want to have a bunch of grease in the container that I'm going to put this in, at least not that much. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this grease with a paper towel. And, oof. All right, these are called the drive keys and part four says take them off. I am going to leave them on. Five. Remove the two machine screws, lock washers, and flat washers, and remove the ball bearing. Okay, I don't want to be dealing with this grease either. So, let's just scoop it all out. Make sure there's no... It's pretty gross. That's pretty awesome. I like the smell of grease. Reminds me of victory. I will continue this. It's a little bit ornery. But then that little bit of gumption can't take care of. There's one.
The next step is to get that bearing out of that hole. That should be a, a fun task. And let's take well, I'm confused about how to get this done. So, I'm going to get as much grease out as I can and shed more light on it. See if the answer just presents itself. Now I noticed that these little washers moved. So let's get that out. Okay, I decided to take a look on the back side of the shaft and I did press on this with a screwdriver and whatever it was, whatever this is, I thought it was the back side of the bearing, it bent and it bent pretty easily so I'm hoping it's just some sort of weak uh, washer, but I see nothing on the diagram other than a bearing. Okay, I took a hammer and a screwdriver and I just tapped this little thing to see if it moved the bearing at all, and sure enough, did. So I am going to give it a tappity tap, see if we can kind of manipulate this out. And that bearing is coming out with the slightest of taps. So, yeah, it's moving right along. Okay. Uh, I thought it was pretty hard. And I did gaff this up somewhat when I... Now this damage here was hand pressure just with a screwdriver, so I don't know. I may have to replace this bearing, but it might be reusable. Here's a better look at that bearing. You can see the damage. So. Six. Remove the two machine screws and lock washers and remove the bearing cap from the teletypewriter frame. Okay, one bearing cap, very nice looking. Seven, remove the range finder orientation lever from the range finder mechanism. This is the range finder lever and it requires the removal of the main shaft so as to remove it from the range finder mechanism and this, this is the screw, so we will, whoa, that was easy, let's take it off now. Oh, I sense the whole screw is coming out. Well, that works. Let's 
maybe. I don't. Okay. I will put this with the main main shaft stuff. Let's make sure nothing's gonna fall. Okay. Eight. Remove machine screws and lock washers. Pull the selector camshaft out of the frame far enough to allow the selector clutch fork to clear the driven disc on the selector camshaft. For part A and for the rest of the removal of the main shaft, we need to address the uh, selector assembly and camshaft. We remove these two machine screws which hold in place a camshaft the selector camshaft that sits inside here and it holds the driving disc the whole driving disc is going to slide that way past the selector clutch fork then this whole shaft should be able to lift right out so let's get on it there are two screws that I can see right off the bat. This is one of them. And I'm hoping it's just two. You know, with any luck, I'll just be able to loosen them. Leave them right where they are until it's time to take off the selector assembly. Let's try that. We're going to give it the good old college try and see if that shaft will slide. Don't know. So with any luck. No, I think I have to remove them. Well. And if there's another screw tucked up in there, I am that will require a whole nother video. being careful with the little lock washer. And this other one is a piece of cake. My mo fat Moby Dicks are right in the camera angle. So nobody throw a harpoon at your computer screen. They're just my little whales. And it decided to fall into the machinery. Okay, I got it. Yay. Nine. With the function shaft in the stop position, remove the main shaft. Okay, so we're going to give the selector camshaft a little tug until it clears the friction disc driving disc uh, clears this little clutch plate oh my goodness that is easy now this other shaft so we're just gonna hang on to it and there is our main shaft I'm just gonna kind of wipe it down and put it in the box I put the rangefinder orientation lever back because I think that that should stay with its function group. Also I put the machine screws back in the selector camshaft. So those are going to stay there. They're just kind of loosely put on, well, tight enough where they're not going to fall off. Also this bale blade was sitting on the machine it just sits in 
side the uh, little bearing here or so anyway it came right out I'm gonna go ahead and leave that with the main shaft there's plenty of room in this box here so when the carriage comes off it might be a good time then that you just slide out the bale blade okay thanks for watching Good night.